Okay. So you ready to start, Ryer? I've been ready. Because I've been in here. All right, there's one foot. There's another foot. And it's back straps. And well, let's see how the day goes. We don't know the theme because we haven't really jacked around enough yet to know it. So we had this idea. I'm like quite a ways into shooting the back strap, my wrist strap practice. So I don't know, this is gonna be potentially terrible, potentially good, but it's just a day in the range with the back strap. Back straps and red beards. Oh, you know who was behind the camera, Ryer, my new sidekick. Used to have Caleb, but Caleb deserted me for sweet tea and lemonade. Look at that. I mean, look, just look. Freaking right in the tubes. You've got that telephoto lens, so I bet this 80 yards looks just like 20 yards, doesn't it? Zooms in real nice. Real quality zoom in. Oh gosh. All right, so for those of you watching, we're now, I guess this is probably about nine months into what was a concept of taking all the new internal components of the Silverback Plus and incorporating them into a wrist strap that's actually a normal size. And man, this is freaking awesome. And this right here is going to be the answer to the archery industry. Because I feel like what is awesome about people getting started in archery is just that, you know, once they learn to pull back and look through the peep, they put their pin on the, the, on the target. And for the longest time, they were just always told, like, when the pin's on the target, just kind of, they've always been told squeeze the trigger but they start just hitting the trigger and it just becomes an index game and people incorporate shooting trap shooting skeet with that index finger and this little thing it does a lot of stuff right sometimes punches triggers picks boogers i mean turn things with it does a lot of stuff but what we don't want it to do is punch a release so the idea behind the back strap was to take everything that I coach with pulling through the shot and incorporate it into a wrist strap. And I've been shooting it in alternation with my, my regular releases. And uh, it's freaking amazingly accurate. And I'm learning some things that I think if I were to coach people with a wrist strap, I would probably do it a little different than I used to back in the day. And it could be because of how this one shoots and how it feels, but I've made a few little tweaks. I'll talk you through maybe next end. That was a little, a little out of gas, but uh, yeah, so this has a BOA system, which is pretty awesome. I never really knew where I wanted it at first. I used, I've shot so many different wrist straps in my career, but uh, there we go, there we go, inside outs to start the day. But with this one, I've just really found that Putting that thing where when you tighten it down, it's right at the base of my palm. And when I lay it up here, 
I, once I have weight on it, I'm able to, to get my finger on it about right here. About right in here is where I, I'm able to get my finger on there and then disengage the safety and then just pull back. But shot one was a little spider right there shooting awesome. But there's a lot of questions I get in relation to wrist strap releases. One of the questions is, you know, do you have to change your bow setup if you shoot a handheld release? And honestly, this is a bow right here. Um, quite possibly, yeah, it doesn't even have a serial number. Um, this was probably the very first NTN I ever got that was colored. Um, one of the OGs. And my peep height and my D loop is exactly the same as it was with my handheld release. I have not moved it one bit. And, you know, I think for people who have shot wrist strap releases, you know, there's a lot of things that people start to do because with the wrist strap release, honestly, sometimes it's hard to find an anchor position that feels repeatable. Now with a handheld release, you know, I'm able to split those two fingers when you hold a handheld release. And I always have my one finger under my jawbone, my middle finger right above the jawbone. And I focus on pulling that V right there along the jawbone to activate my shot. And what's important about that is that position is critical because when you're in that position and that D loop is right in between the two, your arrow is sitting right here in the safe zone of your face. So that arrow can travel forward without any facial pressure on it or contact. Now with my wrist strap, I'm shooting essentially in the same position instead of being here, I'm just really right here. So my index knuckle is right, I can feel it touching my earlobe right there. And I'll show you once I'm at full draw, but one of the things that I'm doing, instead of me being here, I'm really just here. But one of the things that I'm doing is I'm actually relaxing my hand a little bit more, which is something I used to not do because I was so used to holding on to that release as I pulled it back when I shot older wrist straps. I used to have one that had more of a, you know, more of a threaded um, kind of, I don't know, a threaded rod that had rubber on there. And you would really hold that and pull back and you'd try to anchor in. And then you would kind of never let go of that tension and then move your finger to the trigger. Whereas with the back strap, because I'm activating with pulling, I'm able to relax my hand a little bit more. And what I'm finding is even though my index knuckle is at the base of my earlobe, just like that, I'm actually relaxing my thumb just like this so that my thumb is laying right under my jawline right here. And so I'm feeling the anchor position of the thumb right under my jaw. And that's really important because a lot of people, because they want to feel locked in, they'll put their thumb behind their neck. And I know there's some archers out there and I know there's some that are good friends of mine that that's how they've always shot. And trust me, there's always exceptions to the rule. There's always gonna be one person or two people that make um, a certain technique work awesome for them, but for the rest of the archery community, it's just, not gonna work. Same is true with handheld releases. There's people that shoot an, an insanely light handheld release trigger and they just put their thumb on there and they just wait and wait and wait and aim and aim and aim and aim until it goes off. And there's also ones that have it so stiff that they just make a continual fist around the release until it fires and it's just that stiff. For me personally, I can't shoot that way. I've always had a medium trigger I brought my thumb to the, that trigger and I kept my thumb in the same spot. And as I pulled back, that skin that's piling up on that trigger builds pressure on it until it fired. But it was always about the pull, not about the aim. And so if you are trying to anchor 
with that thumb back there, what happens is people don't have their thumb up here, you know, which is kind of where they need to be. They bring the thumb down here, and when that happens, the arrow follows it just because of where the release is going to come off your hand. So if your thumb's behind your neck, the release is going to be right above it, which puts the arrow right on your chin. And here's the problem. The more you pull, or if you turn your face, I'll show you. If you turn your face and your arrow shaft is sitting on that chin bone, as soon as you turn your face, any, the arrow tip will start to move. So if you, if you have any facial pressure, you're moving the point of that arrow. But by putting that arrow in the safe zone of your face, where the cradle is right here beneath your lip, you have some leeway to move and have some of that clearance. So I'll, uh, I'll let you get a little spicy with your camera and I'll draw back. I'm just going to make my normal shots and you just come in close and look at the clearance that I have with the arrow shaft and my face and how I don't have any contact in here. You can also, as I draw back and anchor, come on in close and, and just let them see what this is like. I want them to see where my anchor is. I want them to see where that thumb is. And I'll just make four shots and just work around so they can see the clearance difference. And then on that last arrow, I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about and uh, how important it is to not have that thumb in a position that puts the arrow shaft in compromise of clearance. All right, so there's feeling the knuckle, at the base of the earlobe. You can see my thumbs relax right here under. And what's awesome about my indoor training area that I have here, I'm at 20 yards. So anytime you see me shooting indoor or doing my training, which this is really where I just grind numbers. See, numbers, these are just ends. Ends and ends and ends and ends and ends. Just shot two today, might as well mark those down. So, uh, just grinding out that repetitive motion. So here we go again. Go ahead and come in, let these guys watch how I anchor, how I acquire the peep. And then I pull on that trigger so the safety's off and then just focus on pulling my elbow right back to that deer's face right behind me. Awesome. Let's give it another go. So the other thing too I'll talk about here real quick is, so you can see where your thumb position would be. My elbow is going to follow, right? My elbow is going to follow that thumb position. Just like with a handheld, if people anchor with a handheld down here, that thumb's low. So your leverage is coming down and you're pulling with a lat more so than the rhomboid, which is right between the shoulder blades. So by having this elbow up and having that index finger at the base of the jaw, again, I'm finding right now by relaxing this hand and pulling more with the pressure of this strap right here and pulling through, I'm not having to worry about variation in my hand tension. And it is, these shots are just going off great. Draw them back. There's my earlobe. Thumbs relax on the underneath the jaw. Peep. Pulling through. Okay, now on this one, I'll draw back twice. I'll show you two different things that are specific to exactly what I talked about. So watch this. If I 
were to pull back, put my thumb behind my neck, one, my peep's going to be a lot higher, but you see the interference that that arrow shaft will now have. And that clearance, believe me, is a problem. One of the biggest mistakes that people make when it comes to long range accuracy is having variation in string and facial pressure. I mean, obviously there's other things, front hand torque, the way your hand comes off the string. But if you're pushing on that arrow in any way, I mean, you would never draw back and let someone put a little, just even a sixth of an ounce on the front of your arrow shaft. You'd never let them push on that if it was on your rest because you know it wouldn't hit right. Same is true right now. So the other thing too, I'm finding that if I kind of have my, my wrist strap when I pull back about right here, if I have it in the center, I feel like the, the wrist strap is, is kind of torquing a little bit on my hand and maybe that's the size of my thumb. So I'm putting mine right there. And once I draw back, it's in a really good spot. I don't feel like I'm having any binding at all on my wrist. Okay, so index finger, base of the thing, nice and light. Thumbs relaxed. Tip of the nose, peeps acquired. Freaking awesome. Chalk it up, another one done. You learn anything, Ryer? All the things. Bam, 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 bam. I like it, I like it. This thing, oh sure, you show the one where I barely get inside the X. Wait, wait, hold, hold on. You just wait right there. Show them that. Show them the skull. That's what you want to show them. All right, let's do it. Come on, Ryer, it's too slow. A lot of times I have to ride my bike to my target and back. I just ride this thing. That way I practice. This is practice for uh, whitetail. Back straps and bikes. Maybe that's today's practice. All right. This time, I'm not going to talk through the coaching. I guess I'll tell you one thing. I do like to mark my feet when I'm practicing in the range. Um, one of the things that I talk about is selective cycling, and I don't mean riding my bike around. Um, what I talk about is when I'm practicing on certain topics, I try to eliminate other things. Now, certainly there's times a year where I just want to focus on all my steps and really think about stance, grip, shoulder, anchor, peep, pulling through. There's times where I want to do that, but there's also times where I just want to focus on certain aspects. Right now, I'm just focusing on the feel of my back strap and pulling through properly. So by marking where my feet are, and especially shooting at a target that's in the exact same spot the whole time, I'm just really not having to think about any variables the only variable I want to think about is how this wrist strap feels when I anchor. Am I being repeatable? I'm depressing or squeezing the trigger so I um, let off the safety more or less, you know. And then I'm just focusing on that pull through, being slow and smooth and just getting used to it.
the more practice is going, the more I'm kind of muscle memories kicking in, getting good feel of everything. That feels terrible. Front shoulder was creeping right there. I don't know if you saw it, but I could feel that it was high. It wasn't really totally collapsing, but I could feel it was high. And I could have continued to pull on that shot, but it wouldn't have been as good as if I would have had it correct at the beginning. So, all right, down, shoulders down and forward, anchors light, no pressure. Eat. Yeah, this is working out awesome. One of the things I've found with tension based releases is there's just really no other way. Seems like if I make a bad shot, most of my bad shots this whole winter have all just been a little bit low right. Haven't totally focused on it. This one's still inside, I'm good, but. What I love about tension-based releases is they teach you the importance of not having to have the shot go at the exact same time all, all the time. Now certainly you wanna learn like your preload or your tension against that back wall. You wanna learn to be repeatable there and you wanna learn how to pull through with the same intensity or the same movement or the same amount of movement or force every time because that helps build your consistency. But honestly, learning that consistency when the bow stops and when you're coming into your anchor, how hard you're pulling, learning that consistency is so critical. And it really does set apart the best archers in the world from the mediocre archers in the world, and then there's a whole nother level from the average mediocre uh, archer that has some awesome days at the local range or an awesome day at a tournament, and then the next tournament they come there and literally fall off the map when it comes to scores because they're not focusing on that tension and pulling through and trusting the movement that might naturally happen because a shot might take longer one time or maybe it doesn't take as long the next time. But one of the things that I love about this, and it was intentional, was you can see that there's some movement for me to take the safety off. So what I really love about this is that it's gonna teach archers that they can now have a little bit of movement in that index finger and not worry about like as soon as they touch it, it's gonna fire. Because you want to be able to trust that float and like trust your pin moving around. Be totally comfortable with that. You know, let all that stuff naturally happen and just pull through the shot. And if some shots take a second or two longer, that's okay. You have to continually be dynamic and continually pull against that shot and just let it be a total surprise. That's what you want. I mean, if if you've ever been to a company, uh, it seems like every company like major meeting, if it's a larger company, it seems like someone always has the bright idea to go to the true value and rent a dunk tank. And you're just sitting in there watching everybody throw balls at, at your little bullseye. And you're tense, right? You're tense, you're waiting to fall in, you're tense, you're tense, and everyone's missing and everyone's missing. And then finally you're just like, whatever and you're sitting there and then bam, someone hits it when you're not even expecting it and you're gone. That's what you want your shot like. 
you don't want all this tension because you think it's going to hit the bullseye. What you want is just a, a trust the float, be relaxed, be happy that you're shooting, be in that moment, and just, just continue to, you know, to like th throw balls at that target, meaning just continually pull back and pull back and pull back. And when it goes and it, that trap door flips, you're going to have an arrow in the center. Whereas if you're tense, 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 anticipating, anticipating, and just like if you're the person throwing at that dunk tank, the harder you try to hit that little dot, the worse you are. It's the ones that just say, I don't care. And they walk up there and just throw it at it. And that's the ones that end up nailing it. So in my stance, here we go. Index knuckle, thumbs relaxed. Nice, see? It's kind of early on in my indoor training, so I'm working on stamina even with my other releases as well. So first shot went off nice and Quick second shot took a little longer, but second shot is right dead on the center of the spider down there. Nice. Such a freaking awesome product for the industry. People need to have confidence that they can move around on a target with archery, but as long as they keep pulling and pulling and pulling and being dynamic. And honestly, I think it'll surprise you, even though you see some movement. Once you get comfortable with the movement and the pulling through, you might move a little bit more because you've never really pulled back back here. But once you just realize like, this is how it's gonna be and you accept it, then from there on out, you're just gonna be okay with a little movement. Movement in the wind, movement on the trigger. I don't think I marked my last one, did I? Yeah, you did. Ryer's that guy when you go to the gym and do like 19 reps, not 20, says something. Right? Right? Right. I just mean practice. Like, we used to practice with good tunes on. Like, if all of you weren't here right now, this place would be rocking. You'd just be jamming some kind of some kind of good song, but I keep getting shut down when I've got songs in the back. So. What's your favorite shooting song at the moment, Ted? Um, what do you jam out? At of? this moment? Right now. If you had to put on only one song right now. Any song that came on would be better than what I'm listening to right now. I don't know. It, it really depends on the mood. Like, sometimes, I don't know. I'm all, I'm on the I'm on like the the hard rock channel for here in the range. Like if you turn it on, there'd be some Ozzy Offspring, you know, some good Zep, a little Green Day, be a bunch of that stuff going. All right, here we go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
That time I didn't pull the safety off all the way. It's pulling, 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 pulling. But Here we go. It's freaking awesome. All right. So let's. I really wanted this thing to be this size so that I could tuck it like that. You know, like if you're climbing your ladder and stuff. I told you that second shot was marginal. It was actually still good, but it felt marginal. But I'm gonna tell you, I know what I did on that shot. I could feel when, I could feel it when I did it, so that's why it wasn't like as good as what I wanted. So let me show you what I did wrong on that. And it relates to what I was talking about when you're anchoring lower. So if you watch back on the video, rewind, shot two. I kind of felt when the shot fired, I could feel what muscles were pulling my, el you know, my elbow back through. And I could tell that I was activating lower. So I was kind of weak on my elbow. So instead of like this, you know, it's kind of like this. So when I came out, kind of came out in a way and I felt more pull through here. Whereas on the second ones, I really wanted to just get the tip of that elbow up a lot. That's one thing that I do commonly with coaching is, you know, I'll have my students, they'll be anchoring. And it's actually something I do a lot with Joe. If his elbow starts coming down here, I'll just touch it and just two inches difference just completely loads that rhomboid slightly different. So elbow up. Okay, so this was the elbow the one time I didn't feel good. So I want that elbow a little higher like that. Look at when that elbow is higher. It just goes so exactly in the dead center that you almost don't need any, you don't need any rings when you do that. That's when you don't need any rings. Oh my goodness. All right. This everybody. It's going to be, I'll just mark it, just so I've got it. But this will be the last. I'm going to end on this one. I'm going to end on a perfect 10 mentally. Back straps and bikes. That's it. I haven't like, I've shot 
a handheld so long that I haven't like figured out like how do you like store this? Yeah, you know, if you're like if you're a wrist strap shooter. I know I've made the best one. I know that this thing is gonna change people's lives. I mean, look at this. Come in here, how long have we been shooting? 40, 30, 40 minutes maybe, 25? Like and this thing just pounds them, right? Told you that one, didn't even need any circles. Finished with that one, which is fairly solid, but that's it. That is it. Hope you liked the little day in the range with Dud in the back strap. Hope you enjoy it. I'm really, really proud of how this came together. It really is awesome. And it really, all jokes aside, it's going to change people's shooting for the better. And it's going to teach you so many things that you probably never understood were important about shooting archery with attention technique. See you, everybody.